I gave a coke to a single mother while her car was broken down, it was the best thing I ever did. Many years ago when I was working as a mechanic in a shop with four other guys, a young woman pulled onto our lot with clouds of steam coming from under the hood of her car. I went out to see if she had pulled in to have us work on her car. She said that she stopped because I thought her car was on fire. She was just trying to make it home. I assured her that her car wasn't on fire, and that it was steam from her car overheating. I raised the hood and did a quick check, and nothing was visibly wrong. We didn't have much business, so I told her that I could put water in the radiator after the car cooled off for a while and see if anything was leaking. It was blazing hot outside and she had two small children with her, so I told her she could bring her children and sit in the customer waiting area where it was cooler. She needed to use the shop phone to call her dad to come and help her. When they were inside, the children saw the Coke machine and started asking for a soda. She told them no that she didn't have the money for sodas. We kept a cigar box full of change. I bought three Cokes and gave them all one. I told her that we always gave customers cold drinks while they waited. When her car cooled off, I put water in the radiator and I saw water leaking from the bottom of the water pump, a sure sign that it was the problem. She had not been able to reach anyone who could help her. She was becoming more distraught by the minute. She told me that she didn't have any money or anyone who could help her. She was on the verge of breaking down in tears. I tried to calm her down and asked her to wait while I checked on something. I went to the other mechanics, explained the situation, and asked if everyone would pitch in some money to buy a water pump for her car. I told them that if we got the water pump, I would do the work to replace it. We used the shop phone and called one of our suppliers to get the water pump. It cost about $20 if I remember correctly. We all put the money together to buy it. One of the guys ran down to the parts store and bought the pump, while the rest of us pushed her car into the work bay. By the time he got back, we had the old water pump off. She was still trying to reach anyone who could help her, with no luck. She kept saying that she didn't have the money to pay for any repairs, and I kept telling her not to worry about it. I put the new water pump on, filled the radiator with water, and started the car to make sure it was fixed. It was all good. I drained the water out and was going to put anti reason when another one of the guys said we should replace the thermostat as well. We kept those in stock, so he replaced it, and we filled it up with antifreeze. One of the other guys checked the oil, and it was low. So we put oil in, and then everyone started checking everything. We put air in the tires, checked all of the other fluids, and made sure everything was good. I asked her if I could test drive it to make sure it was fixed, and she said okay. She had very little gas, so I drove to the gas station, filled the tank up with gas, and drove it back to the shop. When I got back, I told her everything was good and she shouldn't have any more trouble. She kept saying she didn't have the money to pay us. She was about to cry again. I finally got her to settle down, and she put her kids in the car and left after thanking us over and over again. We all felt good about helping her. The next day, her father came in and wanted to pay us for the work, but nobody wanted to take any money. He said that she was struggling to raise two children on her own. He said she had been working two jobs, but was still barely getting by. He thanked us and we became their family mechanics, and he referred all of his friends to our shop. We all felt so good about helping her that we decided to do more. I went to the owner of the shop and told him that we wanted to do something and we needed his help. We wanted him to put up some money, and we would put up some time and labor to help people who couldn't afford to repair their cars. He didn't agree right away, but we finally convinced him. I told him that it would be great for business. Good word of mouth advertising is a shop that helped people while other shops didn't care. He liked that idea and gave us the go ahead as long as it didn't interfere with our regular work and didn't cost him a lot of money. We all worked on commissions so our time and labor didn't cost him anything. When we didn't have cars to work on, I decided to go to a few churches and talk to the preachers. I told them our idea was to offer help to people who had car problems that they couldn't afford to fix. We told them that we would help anyone as long as we had the money to do it. They all thought it was a great idea and a couple of them already had people in mind. I told them that if people could afford to pay a little, that we would accept it so we could use the money to keep going. But if they couldn't pay anything, that was fine. So we started. Sometimes I worked on their cars when business was slow, and sometimes I worked a couple of hours after the shop closed. I remember a couple of us working all night in one car that a man needed to get to his job. And the word of mouth advertising worked. I continued working there at the shop and helping people in the community with their car repairs. We started getting church members who heard about what we were doing and brought their cars in. They paid for the work and some donated to help us pay for parts. One church member donated an old car to us with a bad transmission. I went to a salvage yard in town and told the owner what we were doing and he sold us a transmission at a big discount. We started getting all of our parts at a discount. I fixed everything on the car. New brakes, tires, will change tune-up, and made sure it was a good, solid car. Then I went back to the churches to find someone who really needed a car. 
We found a family whose car had blown an engine and I traded them our car. Then I rebuilt the engine and did the same thing. With it, I probably fixed or donated 8 to 10 cars the first year. The work I was doing made me feel good even the owner, who started putting up more money for the major repairs. Eventually, word reached our local newspaper about the charity work we were doing. They contacted the owner about doing a story. There was a big story in the Sunday paper about it, of course, when they interviewed the owner, the story changed some, it miraculously became his idea to do it, and it was his plan to give something back to the community. I laughed about it and didn't care if he took all the credit. I did the work because it made me feel good. After a couple of years, my circumstances changed and I moved on to a different job. But some of the other mechanics continued to do the charity work until the owner passed away from a heart attack and the shop closed. I was sad to hear about it. He really was a good guy, even if he tried to take credit. I'm just glad we were able to help so many people in need through our work at that shop. It really was the most rewarding thing I've ever done.